Hey guys, welcome back to another Flesh and Blood video. This video is proudly brought to you by the House of Cards, the official sponsor of my stream. Be sure to check out the link in the description below for all of your Flesh and Blood needs. Riptide has very quickly become my favorite meme deck. Now I put meme in quotation marks because not a lot of people play Riptide and you don't really see him ever winning tournaments, but Riptide actually has a lot of play and some really cool tricks that you can do. Being able to use traps to slow your aggro opponents down while also dealing damage to them goes a long way in the damage race. It's also great that you get to use on-rate or above-rate arrows like Lexi and Azalea have over the years to really push damage and on-hits at your opponents. Thanks for stopping by, guys. I hope you enjoy the match. Um, I think we can play the Seek and Destroy here, and then we can pitch the Bolton Shot to play Infecting Shot. And then we can Arsenal our other red Bolton Shot, and then we're leaving ourselves an opportunity to have a pretty big go-again turn next hand. And also, this is for 8, with an on-hit Seek and Destroy, and an on-hit um, Pox token, which is pretty relevant. Like, we're forcing our opponent to really make some decisions here. Because they may not be able to, like, they could block 8 with 3 cards pretty easily. They could block 8 with 2 cards if they brought in Sink Blows against me. Like, their hand may not block well at all. They may have to give me all four cards if they want to block. Yeah, just like that. So they had three two blocks, which means they have to give me everything. Now, they didn't get the, like, they did get the filter. Like, honestly, a hand that's not that good. But at the same time, like, I, I think this is an okay hand. Like, I think, I think we made the right decision by trying to push damage there with an on-hit effect. Because my opponent could have very well have made the decision to keep, like, this Lava Burst or... A mounting anger or spreading flames and tried to make something happen there but so starting out for four i think i think we're just taking this don't think there's really a reason to block the four here We can block whatever they buff. Even if it's a snatch, we can just give two cards and we're like in a pretty fine spot. Okay, so empowerment. I mean, we would have blocked a minimum for five, so it wouldn't have been a problem even if we did block there. But I think waiting to block on a later chain link is the correct decision here. I'm hoping that they have like a couple of one costers in hand, nothing they can actually banish. Um, not likely, but occasionally that kind of stuff does happen. So something to... Something to, like, look out for. Okay, so they have a brand that's going to come in for three. We'll probably just go ahead and give our um, give our Endless Arrow on that. Or is it Falcon Wing? Is Falcon Wing a better give here? So we have Lace with Blood Rot into Bolton Shot into Reload the Drill Shot, which is really what I want to keep here. I think my opponent hit Undo there. And decided not to banish. Okay, so they decided not to banish the brand, which, like, a pretty reasonable play there, in my opinion. The only thing that we really get punished by here if we do block three on the second chain link is if they have a snatch at the end of the chain. And then that's just because it makes our hand a little awkward. And honestly, even if that is the case, I'm just going to block with... Um, Drill Shot and Endless Arrow. Um, let's choose War. That's definitely a better play for us. So they ended their turn with a Warmonger's Diplomacy after dealing six points to us, which is a pretty solid play for them. So if we activate Trench, activate Dreadbore, and throw the Drill Shot, we can Arsenal the Lace with Blood Rot. And I know that they're playing Warmonger's Diplomacy, but like... I think that we're okay since we're playing Trench to Arsenal, whatever gives us the highest upside of a turn. Load the drill shot, and then we'll just come in for eight, or for five, I'm sorry, because of the Dread Boar. I really wish we could come in for eight here because of the lace, but Warmonger's Diplomacy earning its $45 price tag. <laughs> It's one of the most ridiculous, like, a card being $45 is so absurd, in my opinion. Like, it's just crazy to me that that card costs $45. Like, or it did for a while. It might have went back down to 30 I know that originally when I bought them, I actually bought them for, like, I think I bought them for, like, $45, which was crazy. Um, so we can give a counter to the Shuko here, or we can kill the Furnace. 
I think I'm better off to give a counter to the Shuko. I don't know. Breakpoints are pretty relevant here for me. Like breakpoints are like card that I like. I look at using breakpoints pretty regularly. I think we're just going to give a counter to the Shuko and just take the two extra points here of value. And then we'll arsenal the Lice with Blood Rock. Tar Pit Trap looking real good here. Tar Pit Trap looking real good here. Being able to stop an on-hit effect, on, on effect and deal damage to them is so good. The next time an attack action card hits, the effects don't trigger, which is really solid. We're going to take three. I don't really want to give the Tar Pit Trap here on the very first one. I don't think there's a reason to. Um, it's also worth noting that we can just block with the Infecting Shot. Um, and then we have we have Lace Seek into Endless Arrow. So we literally get to block six and have a 10 point turn um, with an on hit of two pox tokens from them. Probably go ahead and give the tar pit trap here. I think this is a pretty okay line. Um, since they pitched a yellow, it makes me think that they have like that they have to have another card here from hand that they would want to play. Like getting to push through points off the traps here. We are down eight points, so we're gonna have to find a way to like make up the point differential here that we've lost so far. <laughs> okay. I mean, there's nothing our opponent can do about us having traps at certain spots. Like, I think let's block three here. Like, one, the on-hit effect wouldn't matter, but we're also stopping whatever they throw at us next. Okay, so they throw nothing at us, which is also perfectly fine. Um, so now we have Endless Arrow for 10, on-hit Pox, on-hit Seek and Destroy. On-hit, this comes back to hand, and we get to Arsenal it. So we literally just took zero damage, and we're now throwing a 10 power arrow at them off of three cards, which is very strong. The casual three for 10 here. Riptide's ability, like, making this possible here. Whereas, like, in Azalea, you'd have to have a card to, like, activate. You'd have to have resources to activate the Death Dealer. Um, you know, even in Lexi, you'd have to have the resources. Like, this is... Riptide's ability is very strong and gives you the... Gives you the ability to do some really powerful stuff. Our opponent just goes to 26. I mean, it's a tough arrow for them to block. Um, so I'm not surprised that they decided not to, but it is a tough one for them to block. It's worth noting that we can block Drill Shot and Infecting Shot and then just go 10 power arrow absolutely one more time here. Like, this feels pretty good. Being able to block 6 and attack for 10, like, especially with the on hit of Endless Arrow against a deck that doesn't want to block. Like, we're just getting a lot of value out of that. Do I just want to take four here? Or do I want to block Infecting Shot and, like, Crown here? It's a good question. I mean, I guess technically I could have blocked with a Lace with Blood Rot there and like just went la Lace with Frailty then Endless Arrow for 7, which is still fine. I'd like to be able to attack with my Endless Arrow for 10 if I can. We're going to take 3 here. We're going to block 3 on the Rising Resentment. I think that's a pretty good decision to block right there. Activate fire for free. Is this for two? I was like, yeah, I think this is Shuko territory right here. So we go to 21. I would be surprised if they went for mask right here. Yep, that's an absolute blowout of a play right there for us. Um, I mean, they've drawn two warmongers and four hands. Like, that's an extremely high percentage. Like, they've seen 66% of their cards in in four of their hands. Like, that's a pretty... Pretty high value there, so. We literally just kept all of our two blocks for nothing. Like, and that is the that is the downside of, of this play. The good news here is that we can go. 
we can go endless arrow. If they don't block it, we get to go snaps. It's like they probably don't have sync below against us. And then we get to pitch lace with blood rot. And we actually get to activate the endless arrow one more time here and come in for five. So we still get to attack for nine, even though our hand was like kind of lackluster. But we gave up our crown of providence there when we didn't need to. Now, there's no way for me to know that they're going to have the second copy of Warmonger's Diplomacy there. Like, I don't think there's a there's a world where I even consider playing around that, if I'm being honest. Um, but, I mean, nonetheless, it was a good play for them. We're going to arsenal this. I mean... I like just blocking five here, if I'm just being entirely honest. There was a part of me that thought, maybe we'll keep the rabble here. It's like, maybe we'll keep the rabble. Man, if they do not have a Draconic starter, that's going to be so good for us. We're going to be able to get so much value out of that. Playing Bittering Thorns and playing... Playing Bittering Thorns and playing... Um, and Emberblade in the same deck is not an easy thing to achieve. Now, granted, it looks like they are playing all nine copies of Brand with Cinderclaw, which I think is a must for them if they're going to be doing the Bittering Thorns and Searing Emberblade, because it can be pretty clunky, not only on resources, but also on the fact that like Bittering Thorns is a non-Draconic starter. I'm really curious to know what their last card is. Okay, so, I mean, we're just going to block three here. Like, take one, go to 16. And then we have the ability to play Lace with Frailty and then come in for seven. Like, it's a really, again, this is like a really strong hand for us. I could have kept the E-Strike at the off chance that they actually decide to um, block this out here. But, like, not, not likely. Like, they'd have to have two, three blocks in Furnace here, or they'd have to have... A three block, a two block, Shuko and Furnace. Like, more than likely, like, the value that we've gotten with this Endless Arrow has been absolutely insane. Like, this has been an insane amount of value here. I mean, again, we can just block eight. We'll take four here. They're going to use their links this turn. Like, they've hung on to it as long as possible here. So, they're going to break their links the first opportunity they get this turn. Like, it's the only thing that makes sense. I could trench, honestly, I could trench, play premeditate, and then come in for nine with the death touch, and then arsenal Bolton shot, and then block with Bolton shot and searing shot here. That could be a line of play we could take. I mean, there's there's quite a few lines that we have here that I could take, like that we have access to. All the zero costers, like, and, like, not having any blues is, like, a little awkward, but at the same time, like, Trench gets you that resource you need. We also have the option of just blocking 10 this turn and throwing the Endless Arrow. Like, we started the turn at 16, and we're going to 12. They're going to get a double strike here. Okay, well, considering that this is, I think I'm just going to take this here. When they come in with a double strike for a second time to come in for two right here, which is more than likely what they're going to do, well, I'm just going to give the death touch here. Because I would rather throw the endless arrow. Like, not that I think I would rather throw the endless arrow. Death touch for nine is like a better play. But like, I think that this is just a, like, we'd have to, we're giving up an arsenal card here to be able to throw this at them. And I don't think that's correct. So we'll just block with Bolton shot here on chain link. Four. Wow, chain link four already. Uh, the double strike really helps with that. They haven't seen another snatch yet, so I do have to be a little bit careful here. Honestly, this could not have worked out better for me than it did right there in that spot. Hopefully this isn't snaps into something else. Okay, so they didn't snaps there, which is very good for me. So now we're going to go premeditate. And, I mean... They can take seven if they want to here, but I don't think that I don't think that anybody is advising they take seven in this spot. Like this will put them to one. Now, if they finally drew an Art of War, like maybe they finally have like a five card hand that like really puts on a lot of pressure, then it's 
very possible that they could do this. Like, I that they could take seven here. I think the only reason that we're really in as good a spot as we're in this game is because of how poorly our opponent has blocked. Like, 100%, and I mean that, like, in as nice a way as possible, I think we're in the spot that we're in because our opponent blocked poorly throughout the course of the game and has continued to give us this endless arrow bag. That's the third time I've thrown that endless arrow at them. Well, this is an insanely good time to draw a collapsing trap. Let's think about this. Do I want to block the collapsing trap here? I mean, it gets rid of it. They go to seven. They have no cards, which kind of just ends their turn. It's actually kind of insane. I actually really like this play. Um... I don't think there's a reason to load anything here just in case something happens. Collapsing Trap is like absolute value. It's so like them making this a, a legendary card was such a smart design from from LSS. Like, I think I'm just going to give the Inertia Trap. Like we're not going to get any points off of it, but I definitely just want to play the Inertia Trap. Um, we'll just load the Rabble here. I think this is fine. Now... We have only seen one blue in eight cards, so, like, there is, like, a moderately decent chance that there's a blue on top. I hope not, but it was like, appears there's a better chance there's a red on top. You love to see it. There might have been some world where I'm just supposed to, like, block with the Inertia Trap and, like, try to get value out of the Inertia Trap last turn. I don't know. Like, I think that pushing damage here is the better way to do it. Arsenaling Seek and Destroy, we only get punished by this if we have a, if they have a, um, oh man, if they have a, uh, a Warmonger's Diplomacy here, which they very well could have. I think blocking three is the correct play here. So our turn honestly looks like right now, if we get to keep these two cards, I assume, are we going buff power or draw a card here? Draw a card. Okay, so I think I'm just going to pass and see what they do. Okay. I mean, if I go to five, I could make a more informed decision after this. I think I would rather use the Inertia Trap to stop them from having a five card hand next turn. Because we're going to force them to block this turn. Like, this hand is really good, and we get a lot of value out of it. So, we're going to play and talk. We're going to play Seek and Destroy. We're going to play the Rabble. And then this being for seven is pretty good. It forces. So, if they take one and go to five here, if this is for seven, it forces at least one card out of their hand, potentially more. So, I don't think using Bullseye Bracers is correct here. I do think we want to load the Intoxicating Shot. And we have a death touch on top, which is pretty cool. I mean, it really just blocks two at this point in the game. Um, we're really looking to like use a codex to get leverage off of our to get leverage off of our death touch. I'm pretty sure we already have a death touch over here. We blocked with one earlier. Yep, there's one earlier. Um, so we're really looking to try and get value out of that. Intoxicating shot for seven is really good. Like. They also have to make a decision here because, like, don't get me wrong. Like, I understand that, like, them getting the Quicken token, like, well, it's more the Courage token than the Quicken token. Like, they could just have Snatch in their hand. So, like, if their hand is, like, card, card, Snatch, they could give up two cards, keep the Snatch, take three, go to two, and then come in for five, which is actually a really strong play for them. Now, the good news is that the boulder trap puts them to one and lets me reload the death touch here. If they just play... Um, yeah, we're just... Is this an attack with greater power? Um, so we're going to reload the death touch here. I think that's probably the best thing we're doing. No, I take that back. That's just wrong, right? Because the remorseless is for eight. 
Like, I think I just want to play my Death Touch, <laughs> if I'm being honest. But this is just a better play because it's for 8 and we get more value out of it. Um, plus, our opponent can't take any damage. Now our opponent is at the spot in the game where, like, they no longer have any options. Like, any trap, it, almost every trap kills them from this position. Also, we're at a point in the game where, like, they're forced to just start giving us three cards every single turn, if not more. If they have three two blocks in their hand, they're going to give me their whole hand here. There's that last Warmonger's Diplomacy. You love to see that. You love to see that. We'll just pass to our opponent here. Okay, so they're just going to pass. Maybe they wanted to do something else there? I don't know. That's interesting. Like, maybe they realized that they could do something else. I'm kind of surprised that they gave me the Blaze Headlong. Makes me wonder if they have a Phoenix Flame in their hand. Like... There aren't many cards better than Blaze Headlong. Oh, that makes also makes sense. So let's play the Sink Below. And we'll just put the Frailty Trap, or I'm sorry, the Boulder Trap on the bottom. I'm going to have to get used to that. Talishar is going to, I'm going to have to get used to that. So I'm not going to load anything here, I don't think. Four and five is actually kind of different, so we'll just pass on reloading anything. And then we'll sync this. Well, we had a way to use... If we had snaps at this point in time, we could be in a pretty good spot, but I used snaps pretty efficiently earlier. Like, snaps was pretty good for us. I think five is a lot better than four here, honestly. Like... Like, the Codex didn't really do us any good anyway. It's also worth noting our opponent only has 21 cards left in their deck. We have seen all three Warmongers Diplomacies. They played two very early on. Like, very early on in the first, like, four hands, I think. And so, like, that really, like, really hindered our game plan. And still yet, we're in a really decent spot here with the... The Frailty Trap's just gonna kill him here, which is, like, so good. you love to see it. Frailty Trap winning the game is insane. Over the course of that game, we used our traps to deal 6 to 8 points to our opponent while also stopping on hit effects, which against Ninja is really important. I was able to use Endless Arrow all game to just continuously pressure my opponent with on hits of Frailty and Pox token while continuing to arsenal a really powerful arrow. While Endless Arrow was the MVP of that game, it's also worth noting that Endless Arrow was the MVP of that game because our opponent didn't block for as long as they didn't. Now, I understand their Fi, their cards don't block that well, and they don't want to block. They're wanting to pressure us and try to win the game by racing us. The problem is, all of my cards in Riptide are on rate or above rate, so I'm just able to continue to pressure him and keep the same Endless Arrow all game, which put me in the driver's seat. Guys, if y'all see anything you think I could have done better, let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear about it. If you liked the video, be sure to like and subscribe for more content. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Take it easy, guys.